So the first principle is be lightweight and generous. So this guy is a guy called Paul Adams. He wrote on a, his blog uh, in 2012, almost every app built for a brand on Facebook has practically no usage. Heavy, immersive experiences are not how people engage and interact with brands. And in 2012, brands and agencies were falling over each other to make uh, Facebook apps on a custom, a custom tab in Facebook. So this was quite a controversial thing to say at the time. But um, if it was true of uh, Facebook apps in 2012, it's doubly true of what mob brands are trying to do on mobile in 2015. So this is a video that um, Jurex did about a month, month, two months ago. It's got 37 million views, which is pretty decent. I think the whole suite of videos have got more, something more like 60 million views um, and pretty good engagement around it. It's interesting because there's a Bill Burnback quote that a lot of guys like to, to quote, which is, um, if your, if your ad doesn't get noticed, all else is, is academic. And what's interesting is that now you've got a whole school of thought which is saying actually there's a stage before that. And there's a stage where, where before you get noticed you have to be seen at all. The stats around this video show that one, people have seen it, and two, lots of people have seen it. So it achieves that kind of base level before anybody gets to notice it. So when we launched our new range of sex toys, we took the opportunity to create something really different to show people what they're missing out on. We wanted to do something spectacular, something that had never been done before, a world first. We wanted to show two sides of the same story, perfectly synchronized, on two separate devices. On the TV screen, we'll see a sexy commercial, but when the app is launched, we really crank up the heat. We'll reveal a raunchy, voyeuristic peek into what other people are up to behind closed doors. To do this, we created an app that listens for our TV ads music, then locks onto the picture, which means unlike any other dual screen film, our device syncs perfectly no matter what point the film is at, without buffering or lagging behind. So pretty cool, right? Um, sexy, um, cutting edge, world's first. It got some decent PR, so it got covered in digital buzz blog. The trouble is, pretty much nobody's downloaded the app. So, um, on Google Play Store, Google Play Store tells you how, uh, how many people have uh, downloaded it. It's about 500 to 1,000 people have downloaded this app. On, and it's got 15 reviews stroke ratings, which isn't really a good ratio of downloads to reviews ratings. Um, Apple App Store doesn't tell you how many people have installed it, but this uh, website estimates it and it estimates it around 1.6 thousand people have downloaded this app. And nobody's bothered to review it on the App Store, which isn't a really good sign. Um, so as far as like that, before, before you get to notice an ad, it has to be seen. So when it's, and it's got to be seen by lots of people to achieve reach, bar and sharp, how brands grow. And this really hasn't achieved that first step, that kind of really cool synced experience, even though it's a world's first, even though it ticks all these boxes of, that we're always looking for with digital. Maybe it's because they haven't promoted it right. Maybe it's waiting for the right audience to, to find it and it's going to go, it's going to catch on fire when people, have, when people, the right people find it. Or maybe there's something fundamentally the way that they've approached it which doesn't really work. And I think it's kind of the latter. So uh, this is a guy called Martin Weigel. So he's the head of uh, planning at Widens in Amsterdam. But he did a, a blog post a couple of years ago called Lightweight and Generous. And uh, he talks about the creation of a fluid, intuitive experiences which the reward outweighs the effort is reflected in Apple's guideline for mobile user experience. How can we as brands maximize the reward to effort ratio? And when you think about that kind of the Durex Explore experience, I think they, they've got the, the reward to effort ratio out of whack. So the amount of effort to be in the position where you, you're dual screening with that app on your tablet or your phone, dual screening with your TV, you, there's a lot of hoops you have to jump through. There's lots of things you have to do to get to that point. And then the reward isn't that awesome. And if you put too many uh, hoops in people's ways, it's very, very easy for people to ignore you. So number two, let's use real user behavior. So this is Julianne Moore uh, receiving her Oscar, very excited. And this is search data from the night of the Golden Globes. And um, what you can see is really intense spikes around the winners. Um, and if I show you uh, a particular uh, movie, so this is the Golden Globes uh, Boyhood. So the yellow searches are on desktop, the blue are on mobile. And you can see these intense searches uh, as, pe as people win. So that's real user behavior, real things that real people are doing. And, and we've got the data to prove it. And what Google Play did off the back of that is for Oscars night, they created uh, 
dynamic ads that totally built on that user behavior. So when um, the best picture Birdman was announced, within 0.3 seconds of that announcement, Google had um, ads live saying, congratulations to Birdman, go to Google Play where you can download this, this video or other videos by that, uh, other films, other stuff by the people in it. And actually they did it all night. So what they had was dynamic creative, which was all set up to see every permutation of what could happen. And it was all ready to go, flick of a switch and some real results around it. So 108 million impressions over the course of the show, um, 334,000 clicks to the Play Store. A really great example of using, using real user behavior to inspire kind of creative what you're gonna do. And then the third one is, if it's not useful, usable, or delightful, it's just contributing to the digital landfill. So this was a quote by um, James Hilton, who was the co-founder of AKQA. I feel like a, a lot of things that brands do on, on digital is, they put their heart and soul and love and effort and, and resource and talent into something. And then when it launches, it's like, it's almost like it doesn't exist anymore. It's kind of like it's launch and leave, it's gone. It's like, we're on to the next thing. And a lot of the time that ends up becoming digital landfill. So I'll try and show you something which isn't Digital Landfill. And so this is Peyton Manning. He's the quarterback of the Denver Broncos. And uh, last year's Super Bowl, not the one that's just gone, the one before that, he was the golden boy. He'd had an amazing season. He, the Denver Broncos had, had blown everybody away before him. He was the absolute star of the show. And in the first quarter of the, the Super Bowl, he had a terrible quarter. Nothing went right. He had an absolute disaster. And just before the, um, the first quarter break, um, they, the camera on the TV cut to him on the phone, and it was only on screen for about two or three seconds, and then it was gone. Within a minute, the internet was like this. <laughs> so that screenshot of Peyton Manning, just this real user behavior, this really, this thing that people are doing. And um, Madden are the equivalent, the NFL equivalent of EA FIFA. So they make um, games which are NFL games. And Madden saw this as a real opportunity and they did this. As a way of generating really relevant advertising, this just killed. Summing up, be lightweight and generous because no one needs to interact with your ad. If you give, put too much um, uh, obstacles in the way, there's so many more interesting things to do. Um, use real user behavior. When you, everybody's carrying around a powerful computer in their pocket, you get so much information about what they really do. You don't have to make it up. Ultimately, all that adds up to, I think, is focus on the user and all else will follow which like I say, Google's principle number one isn't let's show off how clever we are with new technology, it's focus on the user and all else will follow. And that is me. <laughs>